Uh, you write for the theater, and have, yeah. you have. And um, so I'm asking this question, what is a play? Because initially, when I put on my very short plays, I asked one of my friends to write a play for it, and he was said, well, no, uh, because I don't think a play can be that short. And so then I, I had this discussion, what is a play? And now I'm sort of trying to redo the discussion for the internet. So I'm interviewing my friends, yeah. pe my friends whose work I like, and asking them, well, what is a play? I don't know, you know, I went down uh, to the dump a while back and uh, saw a fella that I hadn't seen since I was a kid. He's from my hometown, he's working down there. And uh, he said, Jesus, how are you, Joel? Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. I thought you were in a play or something. I thought you were over in New York. And I, I, I was thinking about it afterwards, and, and that's largely like out around where I come from and stuff. Plays happen in places like New York, or, or uh, plays belong to Broadway. And I remember growing up thinking along the same lines that TV or anything was something that happens on TV in a whole other world and we don't have access to it. But, um, or that plays belong to Broadway or old English, you know, Stratford deals and just all Shakespeare stuff. But I don't really know, I don't really have an opinion on what a play actually is. I, I have a tendency to agree in a sense that, you know, five minutes on stage is not necessarily a play because you don't get enough of a character's journey. But then if it's a contained scene that has a beginning, mil middle, and an end, and two people are acting it out on stage and speaking, then yes, it is a play. This is a short play. Um, but now I realize a play is just something that's happening downtown that means somebody else is working and you're not. <laughs> and you go and you buy a ticket, and, uh, and you sit there, and sometimes it can be really bad, and you find yourself standing up clapping anyways. And sometimes you find yourself sitting really still and not standing up when everybody else stands up. Sometimes you're on stage and everybody stands up, and you wonder what the fuck they're standing up for. <laughs> And other times you're on stage and you work like a dog and you really nail it and nobody stands up. So uh, when I did, uh, I've been in a number of plays that other people have written and I've written a couple myself and been in them. And it's uh, uh, every single time it's a really unique mm -hmm. process and a completely different event altogether. Well, you and Sherry wrote uh, play I got to direct The Devil You Don't Know. It was mm -hmm. one of my favorite directing experiences in and terms of what came out of it. The yeah. way the play looked at the end and the acting. I was really happy, you know, to be a part of it. Yeah, and that was definitely one of those experiences where I would not be able to tell you what a play was. I had no idea what I was doing going into it. and just sitting down writing and it was all coming from a very and I had no indication as to what anybody would think about it, or if anybody would show up, or or if it was a comedy, or anything like that. It was just writing uh, for the performance of it, and uh, it was quite shocking when it actually went on stage. And, you know, suddenly it was a comedy. Yeah. You know, but uh, the other thing you about it is every single night it's something different, depending on you know, with live theater, it all depends on uh, the audience. Yeah, you had that idea for that play because it's about a male and female relationship. Of, uh, and I wanted to do it, but Cherry was not so enthused, where we would have all the men sit on one side of the theater and yeah. all the women. I really um, wish that I had been a bit more energetic at the time because it's really sheer laziness that stops you, or just exhaustion that stops you from doing something like that. And that would have been such a wonderful thing to be able to talk about now, you know, look back on and what would have happened, um, or what would have been the feeling in the room, more than likely nothing would have happened. Yeah, it would have been <laughs> interesting for sure. Yeah. But yeah. I, I remember thinking of the audience during that show as, as uh, you know, another character. Altogether. Yeah. Yeah. And when I did say nothing saw wood, I had been reading a lot of uh, Conor McPherson's stuff, and he's a he's an Irish play playwright who's 
sort of approach is there's no fourth ball, for example, and the premise of his plays, is, it, with the exception of the where, yeah, uh, you know, the where has a definite set, and there is sort of a fourth wall. But most of his uh, shows are monologue based, especially the one actors. Yeah, especially the one man shows. Yeah, and uh, the 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 premise is uh, here's an actor in a theater telling a story to an audience. That's why you're here. It's one of the big uh, hurdles I had with St. Ulrich Sawwood was why are the audience here? Yeah. If you get if you take this and this this is a character who's on his way home, having done a fair bit of time in jail, having killed murdered an old woman while he, while he was a teenager in a very small town in Newfoundland and now he's making his way back. Telling his story. So the big question was, well, why is he telling his story? How is he, where is he in the present to be able to tell his story? And the more I looked at it, the more I wanted to bring what my idea of theater was down to its origins, which to me is just straight up storytelling. 